I have some questions for you, Mr. Harris. No doubt you do, but I'm really not in the mood to talk right now. It's been a difficult evening, and I'm not certain I have it in me to answer your questions at the moment. Fair enough, but I will need to ask you about the incident at some point. Yes, that's fine. Just not now. I know the hand and waistcoat pose is supposed to look stately, but to me it, it always looks like the person is scratching themselves. I know the hand and... But the Harris family certainly has a nice view from which to look down upon the world. I wonder if they use... I wouldn't get too close, Miles. That vase is probably worth more than your entire building. She looks like she's up to something. I'm sure the only location the Harrises care about is wherever they are at any given moment. It's nice to see that tea is still served here even in times of tragedy. Interesting. This fabric looks as though it came from a garment of some kind. Be careful not to cut yourself, Miles. I don't think the Harris family has ever seen blood that isn't blue. Look, you can see the balcony extends all the way around the side of the manor. That would make it rather easy for someone to access this window from the outside. No evidence of what was used to smash the glass, though. Probably won't be another year or so before the child gets any practical use out of those blocks beyond putting them in his mouth. It looks rather flimsy. Let's not try sitting on it. Nice view of the garden from up here. That's odd. Why is there a loose button in the crib? Now, I'm no expert on children, but it seems like it would be dangerous to have around an infant. Yeah, the kidnapper left the child's blanket behind. There doesn't appear to be any trace of the silver spoon, though. Nice mobile. Custom made, too. There'll be no mistaking what family this child comes from. Look at that. The kid has a toy chest. My sister and I used to have to keep our toys buried in the backyard. Of course, that is because the only toys we had were dead rats. The Bear's Picnic. My friend Bun... Mr. Harris said his wife went to bed. Probably not a good idea to disturb her. We can't leave yet! You haven't even started the investigation! No point trying to get him to... Wait, the Harris family... I wonder if they use... No point trying to get... Wait, Harry, I wonder if they... Mr. Harris said his... Sort of fuzzy animal wearing a waistcoat. Charming. A steam powered bottle warmer. Certainly beats having to do it in the fireplace. Or in the case of my parents, over a barrel fire. Nice view of the. Look at that. Of course. Nice view of the garden from up.
careful not to... Huh. There's a small emblem sewn onto the side of this piece of fabric. It just says SS. Somebody's initials, maybe? Be careful not to cut your... Probably will... Look. That would make it rather easy. No evidence. It looks rather... F oh. Oh, dear. How wonderful. The soporific has started working. Well done, Fordham. Now how are you supposed to... What's the word on... Instigate? Perhaps it's time to call it a note. Well, Mr. Harris, I believe I've done all I can for right now. Did you find anything? Yes, I believe I have some leads I can pursue. But the most important thing to do in cases like this is wait to hear from the kidnappers. I'll be back tomorrow morning to continue my investigation and ask you and your wife some questions once you've had time to calm down a bit. In the meantime, I suggest you stay here and get some sleep. We'll all need it. Miles, wake up! It's nearly noon. Ah, so it is. Why didn't you come to bed when you got home last night? It was late. I didn't want to disturb you. So what was so urgent about the case Upton sent you? I'm trying to track a kidnapped child. Oh my goodness. That's awful. Yes, the pressure's on. But I think I should be able to crack it. Assuming you actually managed to get anything done at the Harris Manor today. Well, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Also, we've got company. Mrs. Delacroix is having her hair done here today, so please make yourself presentable. You mean I'm not already? <laughs> At least do something about your hair. I do have a reputation to maintain, after all. What's wrong with my hair? Do you really want me to answer that? <laughs> we'll be here all day. Oh, wouldn't you say it's time for a change of clothes, Miles? You be so? Addie gave it to me. Besides, it gives me character. Right. Brooding detective in a long black coat. That's never been seen before. What are you talking about, Bill? Never mind. It's admirable just how... And then he said... Oh. H Hello there. I don't believe we've met. Mrs. Delacroix, this is my husband, Miles. Miles, this is Mrs. Delacroix. Pleasure to meet you, madam. Uh, likewise, young man. A uh, pleasure. Is everything all right, Mrs. Delacroix? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, everything's fine. It's just that... Well, you weren't what I was expecting, is all. Keep your head, Miles. She may be a close-minded idiot, but she's just an old lady. You mean the portrait over the fireplace didn't clue you in? Ahem. <clears throat> now then, Mrs. Delacroix, what was it that you were telling me about Mr. Delacroix and his dogs? Oh, yes! Impressive. She got off pretty easy. I was expecting a repeat of the Parsons incident. You should give Adelaide a kiss on the way out, though, just to make the old bat feel extra uncomfortable. <laughs> Addie? Not right now, Miles. I'm busy. We can talk once I finish with Mrs. Delacroix. Goodbye, Addie. I'll be back later. Goodbye, Miles. Be careful out there. Remind me, Miles, how was finding some rich people's kidnapped baby going to help us track down the flower shop burglar?
It's possible we might find a lead to the burglar during the course of this investigation. Really, Miles? You really believe that? Anything's possible, Bill. You remember how many times we encountered seemingly trivial matters which turned out to be important later on? Well, if you plan on solving this case, you'll need your full wits about you. Again, with the nagging. What is it this time? You need to stop taking the soporific miles. Adelaide has been trying to get you to stop for months, and Upton already suspects something is amiss. Not to mention your little episode last night. Trust me, no one is going to want to hire the duller detective. Clever. Did you come up with that one all by yourself? What are you going to do when the cases stop coming in? How long before you get put away in Riverview? If I do get locked away, it'll be your fault. Which is exactly why you need to get back to your normal routine so you can find the burglar. All right, fine. I'll stop. But if you keep me awake at night, so help me. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll find a way to cope. You were always good at that. Well, I'm glad that's settled then. I knew you'd see things my way eventually. It's not as though you gave me much of a choice. In time, you'll thank me. Probably not before the withdrawal hits, though. Don't make me change my mind on this, Bill. Mr. Fordham, you're back. Allow me to introduce my wife, Miriam. Hello. A pleasure, Mrs. Harris. I wish we could have met under better circumstances, but I assure you I'm doing all I can to find your son. Th thank you, Mr. Fordham. Mr. Harris, has there been any communication from the kidnapper? None at all. Well, I'll have another look around, if you don't mind. Miles, didn't you notice something a bit strange about the Harrises? Quite a few things, actually. What are you referring to? His son was just kidnapped, yet they're each on their own side of the sitting room. Not comforting each other, not crying together. Nothing. They're stuck-up rich people. Not exactly the type to show emotion. Miles, you know I'm the most cynical person there is when it comes to their type. But this isn't normal behavior, even for snobs. This goes deeper than saving face. There's something going on between them. I think you should find out what. Be careful not to... Probably won't be... Ah. Nice mo- Nice mo- Yeah, the kidnap- I have some questions for you, Mr. Harris. Yes, of course. I found this bit of torn fabric by the broken window. Do you know anything about it? Hmm. Looks like it came from a piece of clothing. Possibly a jacket. Do the initials SS mean anything to you? Uh, maybe? I can't really say. You'll have to excuse me, Mr. Fordham. I've got quite a lot on my mind right now. If I can think of anything, I'll be sure to let you know. Tell me everything you can about the kidnapping. I don't know much. I was out last night while it happened. Where had you been previously? I was out with friends. My wife can verify the time I arrived home. Wait a minute. I know this attitude all too well. This man is hiding something, most likely from his wife. I doubt his voice is from beyond the grave, so the question is, what's his secret? Tell me about your son. Charles is a good boy. Very quiet. Miriam had wanted a child almost from the moment we married. You know how women are when they have their hearts set on something. I saw no need to rush, but... Nice to know you're not the only one. Hey, Miles. The first two times Miriam was with child, she suffered some unfortunate accidents. She was devastated, as you can imagine. So when Charles finally came along, he turned out to be quite a blessing. I can't imagine what sort of depraved madman would take him from us like this. You must find him, Mr. Fordham. I intend to, Mr. Harris. Tell me about yourself. There isn't much to tell, really. My life has been fairly well publicized in the newspapers. Let's pretend for a moment that I skip over the society pages. Well, I'm an investor. My father Clyde runs Harris Construction Company, which I will someday inherit. 
Any other details about me are fairly trivial nonsense, I think. I found this button in your son's crib. Does it look familiar at all? No, not at all. Do you think the kidnapper might have left it behind? It's a distinct possibility. Those are all the questions I had for now. All right. I have some questions for you if you're up to answering them, Mrs. Harris. I'll try my best, Mr. Fordham. I found this bit of torn fabric by the broken window. Do you know anything about it? No, I've never seen it before. Do you think it was left by the kidnapper? Perhaps. Did the initials SS mean anything to you? No. I can't think of anyone or anything I know with those initials. I found this button in your son's crib. Does it look familiar at all? No, I don't recognize it. It looks like it came from some cheap coat. Is that what the ruffian who took my baby was wearing? That's what I'm trying to determine. Tell me what you know about your son's kidnapping. Oh, my poor baby! <laughs> Mrs. Harris, I know this is difficult, but I need as much information as you can give me so I can bring your son back. Yes, you're... It, it happened sometime between... Six and eight last night, I think. Both my husband and I had gone out. Charles was in the care of his nanny, Mrs. Davis. I arrived home first, around uh, 8.30, and that's when I found the scene in the nursery, as it was. And what was it you found? Mrs. Davis, unconscious in her chair, the broken window, and Charles, missing from his crib. Malcolm arrived home shortly afterwards, around nine, and then immediately sent our butler, Mr. Havelock, to notify the police. We stayed up waiting for any contact from the kidnappers, but there was nothing. Your husband mentioned he was out with friends last night. Where were you? Oh, I was visiting with some of my friends. We gathered at one of their homes for a concert. It seems hiding something from your spouse is an activity both Harris's partake in. What can you tell me about Mrs. Davis? Well, she's worked for us since Charles was born, a little over six months ago. How did you come to employ her? Malcolm's mother had a friend whose daughter she used to care for. She came highly recommended. We've never had any problems with her. She's always been a dream. Where is she now? In her room, I would guess. With Charles missing, there's little for her to do. Where might I find her room? There's a small building just around the back of the manor. Hers is the fourth door from the left. Can you think of any reason why your son would be a target for kidnapping? It could be that someone wants our money, or some lunatic who's angry about the new airship. My husband's an investor, and my father-in-law owns the company building it, you see. I just don't know, Mr. Fordham. Frankly, the fact that something like this could even happen is just terrifying. Tell me about your son. Charles is our only child. He's such a good boy. Never makes a fuss. Always very sweet. Oh, Charles, you must be so frightened out there without your mother. <laughs> oh, please, Mr. Fordham. You have to bring him home. <laughs> I'll do my best. Tell me a bit about yourself, Mrs. Harris. Mr. Fordham, my son has been kidnapped and is out there alone, terrified and confused. What could I possibly tell you that would make any difference to you finding him? I suppose you're right, Mrs. Harris. My apologies if I upset you. That's all for now, Mrs. Harris. Very well. Fancy. Who in their right mind? Let's see what we have here. Hmm. A very poorly written letter addressed to Mr. Harris. I don't suppose it's a letter of admiration. On the contrary, the author seems quite upset. Nothing else of note in any of the drawers. Oh well, at least we got to play a rousing game of sir. Wardrobes are you.
Hey, it seems like this is where Mrs. Harris keeps her unmentionables. I like the ones with the frills and the stitched cat. Paperwork and receipts. Nothing particularly interesting here. More lacy under things. I wonder which Harris they belong to. Mr. Harris's color so. So, Mr. Harris is a fan of the ponies, is he? I'm sure that's not causing him any trouble at all. Mr. Harris is. An empty suitcase. An empty suit. Oh? Oh? It looks like. There's a handwritten note among the clothes. Uh. Painting of the city. Probably the only time the Harris family sees any of the other boroughs. I have some questions for you if you're up to answering them, Mrs. Harris. I'll try my best, Mr. Fordham. I found this note in your bedroom. What can you tell me about it? I... I... I've never seen that note before in my life! Are you absolutely sure? Mr. Fordham, you mentioned you valued discretion. I ask you to please exercise some now. Would it be possible to speak about this in private? In another room, perhaps? Out of the question, Mr. Fordham. I shall not leave this sitting room in the company of another man if my husband is not present. Yes, I understand. Let's put the subject on hold for now. What a life these rich people lead. That's all for now. Very well. I have some questions for you, Mr. Harris. Yes, of course. I found this letter in your bedroom. What can you tell me about it? You went through our things? I'm a private investigator, Mr. Harris. It's part of my job. Of all the... the insolence! You're upset, I know, but do you want me to find your son, or don't you? <sighs> yes, of course I do. That letter was sent to me by mistake. It was written to my father. Well, if you can even call that writing. Have I ever mentioned how much I hate rich people? Because I really hate rich people. Your father? Doesn't he own the company building the new airship? Yes, that's right. He's been receiving many letters just like that one since the Lygia disaster. But that Devons fellow in particular has sent one every week, along with a bag of chicken bones and dust. How peculiar. Not only that, he leads a daily protest in front of the construction yard where the HMS Lenore is being built, trying to halt production. My God! How did I not see this before? See what? Devons! He has a grudge against this family because of what happened with the Lygia! I'd put money on him being involved with the kidnapping somehow, as a form of retaliation. I'll just have to speak with Mr. Devons and see for myself. Mr. Harris, what can you tell me about these? What? How did you- Listen, I'm trying to help you and your family. I can't do it if I don't get the entire truth. Do you think we could discuss this somewhere more private? I suppose we could. Good. Let's move to the nursery then. Shall we continue our conversation, Mr. Harris? Yes, of course. Now that your wife is out of earshot, tell me about the kidnapping and what these betting stubs have to do with it. Right. As I said before, it had already happened when I got home. I had just come from spending the evening at the Meadows. I see. I take it your wife isn't impressed by your hobby? I promised her weeks ago that I would stop going, but I've had such a good streak lately. The last thing I wanted was to upset her further, yet it would be foolish of me to just give up on something so promising. Can you think of anyone who might want to do you harm by taking your son? Several, I'm afraid. Go on. I... haven't exactly had the best of luck, Mr. Fordham. That's why this latest streak was so important to me. The truth is, I've gambled away most of my money. I've had to take out several loans so Miriam doesn't get suspicious. If she ever found out... It would be over. I can't lose her, Mr. Fordham. I just can't. 
where have I heard this before? You know, things would be so much easier if people just talked to each other. I've tried doing business above board, but lately I've had to seek other resources. What do you mean? I was forced to visit a lending office. The owner was a rather shady Sambo, but I figured he'd be easier to deal with than the usual sheenies that run those type of places. Can you believe this guy? Maybe we should just leave the kid be. He'd probably be better raised by wolves. Who was the owner? Uh, Mr. Le Fay. I didn't bother to get his first name. His business is an abattoir row in Chumley. Horrid place. But I was desperate. You think this Mr. Le Fay may have taken your son as collateral? Let's just say there isn't much those type of people wouldn't do to put a crown in their pocket. How goes the construction of the new airship? There have been some complications, but nothing we can't handle. Could you be a bit more specific? Well, I already told you about the trouble with protesters at the Yard, and we're blocked pending Royal Maverick's review of the safety regulations for the prototype etheric diffusion engines. Agitators and red tape aside, we should still be on schedule to have the Lenore finished and in the air by the end of the year. But really, Mr. Fordham, what the deuce does this have to do with finding Charles? He has a point, you know. Those are all the questions I had for now. All right. If you don't mind, Mr. Fordham, I'm going back to the living room. I don't want Miriam getting suspicious. It's nice to see that. Come in. Good day to you, ma'am. I'm Miles Fordham, a private investigator. I'm looking into the kidnapping of Charles Harris. Are you Mrs. Davis? I am. Oh, bless the spirits. They've sent someone to help at last. <laughs> 